Well, the Lord be with you and a warm welcome to you from all of us here, including the wood pigeon that's perched over my head uh, in Paris Court and Kilbride. Just to say to you that at the very beginning of recording these services, uh, Riley would be out with me in the back garden and he'd be chasing a stone or he'd be digging something and he'd be barking his bonnet off. And I used to be saying to him, Riley, shh. And he has got so used to me doing this now underneath the tree that he knows there are times when he can bark and chase stones and do things like that. And now, as soon as he sees the tripod coming out to record this service, he falls silent and he just sits and watches. Isn't it amazing how the intelligence of creatures can just adapt to all these different things? So welcome from Riley as well this morning. This morning we hear again that very challenging parable and it's wonderful actually how the lectionary gives us these parables that involve life and growth around us and country life which Jesus would have always used in his parables because of the people he was addressing. Um, so this morning we hear about the wheat and the weeds, uh, the farmer who plants beautiful seeds in his field and overnight the weeds are planted too and what he suggests we do with that. But as our service begins now, we just take a breath, wherever we may be, and try as much as we can to leave the busy world aside and to pause for a moment in prayer.
he put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. It's wonderful when you come across a piece of scripture that makes you think. And I struggled with this piece of scripture. I seem to say that quite a lot, don't I? Uh, during this week saying, Lord, now last week you just dropped something into my head. This week, would you mind doing the same? Please open me up. Let me receive this scripture so that it can be through me, your word through me of some use to somebody today. Um, but sometimes when we ask God for things, he doesn't necessarily pop them straight into our heads, but he, he opens up a journey that gets us to the place eventually. And I present in this square a very particular theology that not everybody may agree with. But you see, ever since I heard God is love, I can see him as nothing else. So the way my mind works when I'm presented with a piece of scripture, underlying it, uh, overshadowing it, all around it, is a God of love. So what might a God of love be saying to people? And also I feel that if people know that God is love, they're not afraid to approach him. If they know that God sees them in all aspects of their personality, they're not afraid to come to him. And that's what he wants. He is far larger, as I've said many times before in this square, than all the mistakes we make. He is quite simply love. And if my theology appears, and some have said it before, and that's fine, that's great, because it's good to be challenged. If it appears to be too watery, or too weak, or too fuzzy, I would answer you and say there is nothing watery, weak, or fuzzy about love. Love can demand the hardest parts of ourselves to act in different situations. So let's not underestimate the phrase that God is love today. My journey this week through this scripture and through listening to a whole load and reading a whole load of different interpretations of this, it can be very challenging when you see the words weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
and casting into fire. And it reminds us very much of a very old theology of a punitive God, of a vengeful God. And when one cannot see God as being this, it, it actually provides just as much of a challenge to try and find a meaning. I came across a wonderful meaning that I wanted to offer you this morning. Um, we can see the field in the parable this morning as being the world. And it is really important, I think, for us to understand. God makes absolutely no apologies for the fact that good and evil exist together. And when we look around the world and we see what's happening at the present time, and when we see what's happening sometimes within the lives of individuals at the hand of other individuals, we can see firsthand that evil exists right by the side of good in this world. Let me read to you this piece from Reverend Dr. Jeff Gallagher in New England and see how it sits with you with regard to the God of love and him calling us forward into our lives and closer to him. So here's what he says about this parable this week. I am led to see this text not about wheat and weeds representing two different types of people Rather, I see the wheat and weeds referring to two different crops seeking to take root within us. As sure as each one of us is a field, and in that field, in us, seeds of both wheat and weeds are planted. They come from all that we experience and encounter in the world around us. Both of those then grow together, making us the people that we are people are capable of producing wheat that will benefit the world and also weeds that can make it hard for the wheat to grow. As the imperfect wheat and weed producers that we are, this is how we live our lives. And then when those lives end, when our harvest day comes, God will take what's inside of us remove the weeds from the wheat and welcome our weedless souls into that eternal barn that is promised to us all. This makes for me, he says, a text of hope, less vengeful God, more loving God. This doctor, um, welcome, he's a lecturer and he welcomes when somebody says to him, I'm not so sure I agree with you because what then follows is a conversation that usually results in all of us seeing the text in a new light. And that's what's so wonderful about thinking about this text today in our own experiences, because God does talk to us individually. So I hope this has been useful for you today in seeing a God of love. Um, and in trying to interpret the seeds that are planted within us, the choices that are made, he says to us today, I've, I've planted the seeds in you of my word. I've planted the seeds in you through my son and the choices are up to you, but I will walk with you regardless through it all, through that field that is your life, through that field that is yourself. Let me leave you with his lovely prayer today. Holy God, no matter what parables and stories we use to try and understand you, we know that you understand us to be the wheat and weed producers that we are. Help us grow a little more wheat than weed this week and remind us that no matter how fruitful the harvest, you love the one doing the growing.